With us now is Danny Danon, the chairman of World Likud and a former Israeli ambassador to the UN, knows the building very well. Danny, good to see you. If you were to give one piece of advice to the Prime Minister of Israel, Naftali Bennett, the head of his big speech on Monday, what would you tell him? What would your advice be? Thank you for having me. My most important message will be to stick to the facts, to the truth, not to try to appease anyone. Maybe in the short term, they will not appreciate it, they will not be happy with it, but in the long term, that's how you build your stature, that's how you build your credit in the international community. And especially Bennett, who stepped in only three months ago to this position, he has to build his credibility. So he has to stick to the facts, speak about the truth, and not to try to appease anyone at the United Nations General Assembly. Danny, there are dozens of kings and presidents and experienced statesmen and diplomats. I mean, it is quite a, a, an event, a surreal event, being in the, in the hall of the UNGA. Do you think it's intimidating with someone like Naftali Bennett, who is new to this stage? Will he be overwhelmed by the moment? So actually, when uh, Prime Minister Bennett will arrive to New York, most of the dignitaries will not be there anymore because the opening of the General Assembly took place last Tuesday. And, and by now, most of them are out of town already. And also because of COVID, many of them sent uh, recorded messages without uh, arriving personally to New York. So it will not be like we used to see, like a full house where you have hundreds of people in, in the General Assembly or in the corridors. But yes, uh, at the beginning, I remember my first speech uh, when I took office in 2015. When you go on, on, on that stage, uh, it takes uh, a minute or two to, to be in control. Uh, for that, and his team prepared him for that. Uh, the team surrounding Naftali Bennett has uh, told reporters not to expect props or theatrics, they're trying to contrast uh, the style of Bennett versus Netanyahu. Uh, but Danny, as you know, Netanyahu, while he was sometimes mocked for the props, the photos, uh, they were effective. They, gener they generated international headlines. They were covered uh, around the clock in American media. There was a lot of power uh, behind the props. Do you think it's uh, a mistake? if Bennett goes more subdued, or do you think it's important for him to show a different style? So, so I, I, I agree with you. I think Prime Minister Netanyahu always created the buildup before the speech. He promised the, the media uh, to stay tuned, that he will reveal new information, and we worked very hard to make sure that it will be an interesting event uh, for the media. And like you mentioned, people spoke about the uh, those props uh, many years after. So I, I think it was important. Um, I think that uh, it was very effective. Uh, Prime Minister Bennett is coming from a different approach. He, from the beginning, he said he will not use uh, any props. Uh, maybe it's, it's the right decision for the first speech, but, but in the future, you want to make sure that people remember your speech and you want to make sure that they, they will take at least one important point that you want to make. Before he left, uh, Naftali Bennett told Israeli reporters, mentioned the group of uh, progressive anti-Israel Congress men and women who voted against replenishing the Iron Dome interceptor missiles, said that they are, they are a loud group, but they're failures. They failed. Do you think this is something that he would want to mention, or he should mention in the speech, the, the bond between the U.S. and Israel, should he mention the divide that is awakening now within the ruling Democratic Party of America? Hey, I would advise him uh, not to do that. I would advise him to, to stick to the positive and to the strong ally we have with the U.S. And we saw that in the vote. You know, if you count the votes that voted against uh, the support uh, for the Iron Dome, uh, you know, I think it was maybe less than 2%. So you don't, shouldn't give them any credit. You know, they are vocal, they make a lot of noise. But uh, thanks God they are not powerful uh, or instrumental. So I think we should speak about what we have in common, about the shared values, shared enemies, shared future, and not to give credit to those uh, vocal radical voices. And sir, also before even the UN speech, it's important to note Bennett for the first time himself as prime minister will be meeting with high-level officials 
from the UAE and uh, Bahr other, other, other Gulf st states, Bahrain. Uh, what is the importance of these face-to-face -face meetings and where do you think it will lead next? They are very important because you, you get to know the players uh, and then to build bridges to different countries. Like I, I mentioned, the timing because of the holidays is not perfect. Uh, I remember when I organized for the prime ministers dozens of meetings with head of states. We were like running from a meeting to a meeting and we took the opportunity to meet some leaders from countries that we do not have diplomatic relations yet. Uh, now it will be more difficult, but uh, I think it will be important meetings with the ministers from uh, the UAE and Bahrain. Mm. Danny, thank you so much for your time, sir. Any other final thoughts ahead of tomorrow's big big day? No, I, I think uh, we have to pay attention to the Iran issue. That's the most important issue for us. After hearing President Biden saying he's eager to come back to the negotiations, the Iranians said that they will join the negotiations soon. It's important, and I believe that the prime minister would be very clear about our position to the JCPOA.